What's up everyone, it's Prometheus, and I know it's been a minute since I've done an intro like this, but it's kind of a special occasion. Of course, if you want to jump directly to the Linea Mini content, there's a chapter marker down here for you to do that. Otherwise, if you want to stick around and hear what I have to say, of course, I just want to say Happy New Year. Happy 2022. I hope it's a good year. I hope you all stay healthy. Of course, I'm not going to make any predictions about this year sounding cool or being cool or whatever it might be. Last time I did that, it didn't turn out well. 2020's just got a nice ring to it. 2020's just got a nice ring to it. And of course, I also want to thank everyone who's watched, liked, subscribed, commented, whether it's your first video, your fifth video, or you've been with me since 2018 when I started this journey. Thank you for interacting with my content in whatever way that you do, whether it's here on YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, wherever it might be, thank you. I wouldn't be here without you. I would just be screaming into the void by myself, which is no fun for anyone. And it just kind of blows my mind that people all over the world are watching me right now talk about coffee because who the f am I? I'm just some dude. So thank you for all of your support through 2020, 2021 and into 2022. Hopefully I can just keep bringing out the things that I want to do, keep doing these types of videos where I'm sharing my thoughts, my feelings, reviewing things, all that fun stuff. And without any further ado, let's just dive directly into talking about this beast right here. That is my Linea Mini. And it's almost exactly five years, technically five years in one day, since this guy arrived on my counter. At the time, I was just a bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, newly minted home barista looking to make tasty coffee at home. Fast forward to now and I've pulled thousands of shots, steamed hundreds of pitchers of milk, and made nearly 200 YouTube videos featuring this machine. So needless to say, but my Linea Mini has seen some serious mileage, and every year since I've owned the Mini I've been updating my user experience with topics like maintenance and reliability. So of course, I'll be covering those topics as well as questions submitted on Instagram, so if you want to know the truth about owning a Linea Mini, this is the video for you. The full-size Linea is known throughout the coffee industry as being a bit of a workhorse, and the Linea Mini, in my opinion, is a chip off the old block. Now, in terms of long-term reliability, I touch on this topic every year, and thankfully, I really don't have a lot to say on it, but this year, I do have a bit of an update. Just to review, in the four-year ownership update, I had mentioned I had never had a single day where the Linea Mini was rendered unusable. That was until 2021 where I had an issue that actually took the Mini out of commission for a couple days. A tiny piece of scale found its way into the jet and brought the water flow to a complete stop. As intense as that issue may sound, it's actually a relatively simple fix, and it took the technician less than an hour to get in there, take the jet out, clean out the jet, reinstall it, and have the Mini running like new. And it was one of those issues that I felt like was bound to happen. You're gonna have scale to some extent in an espresso machine because the water you put in has to have minerals to extract the coffee properly, but that's kind of a topic for another video. Hint. So outside of a minor leak and a valve replacement, which I'll cover more in depth in a moment, the issues I've experienced over the course of five years I feel like can be boiled down to wear and tear. And honestly, in my opinion, the Linea Mini has been rock solid in terms of reliability. And now it's time for my favorite and probably the most informative portion of my yearly review, and those are the questions submitted on Instagram. Now I like this because they ask questions that tend to be things I haven't thought about in a while, and also I don't really have to put a lot of work into it, and generally I can answer them off the cuff, mostly. So first question here is from All the Coffee, and they say, I'd love to see a total cost of ownership. Well, All the Coffee, that's not a question, it's more of a statement, but I'll let it slide because I think people want to know the answer. Beyond the initial cost of buying a Linea Mini, which is already one of the more expensive home espresso machines out there, another intimidating factor is the cost of ownership. So of course that includes things like parts and service, but I'm also going to include water. As it's the lifeblood of every espresso machine, beyond some kind of mechanical gremlins or just getting a lemon, the water you use can dictate how much it's going to cost you to run an espresso machine. So to start, the Linea has a two-year parts and labor warranty, so beyond you going buck wild and trying to brew your espresso with Mountain Dew, you shouldn't really have any major repair bills during that time frame. So from there, you're just looking at those non-warranty wear and tear pieces like gaskets, screens, baskets, and springs, all of which should be changed at six month to year intervals, 
and will cost you, I'd say a good baseline is about $100. Personally, I only change those about every year, so we're gonna start our cost of ownership with $500 in wear and tear parts. After your warranty expires, some common parts you'll likely have to replace in a five year time span, as per a Lamarzoco technician, are as follows. And I'm gonna check my notes on this because my brain is full of stepbrothers quotes and I don't have room for these parts. Yeah. You like guacamole? Vacuum breaker, pressure relief valve, check valve, and steam valve rebuild kit, which all totals $216.72. Personally, I've had to replace the check valve, the steam valve rebuild kit, and had a fitting retightened and resealed. So that was about $80 in parts and about $300 in labor. Of course, if you're interested in turning wrenches yourself, it could be a significant savings, but personally, I'd rather leave that to the pros since having a running machine is crucial to my business. Next, let's talk about water. So if you're lucky enough to live somewhere where your tap water can pass Lamarzoco's hardness test to maintain warranty, then lucky you. But if you're like me or many other people all over the world, likely that isn't the case. So you'll have to use something like bottled water, get something like third wave water and add it to distilled, or get a filtration system. Bottled water, by my calculations, is the most economic, but in some cases not the most sustainable option. And based on what I pay for Crystal Geyser by the gallon, which is roughly $2, and I use about one per week, that's about $104 per year. So if you want to go the distilled route and use something like third wave water, it'll cost you roughly $1 per gallon for the water and $17 for a box of 12 mineral packets, which comes out to $1.40 per packet. So a year's worth of water going this route is $2.40, times 52, so $125 a year. Lastly, getting a filtration system. And this can vary widely in cost. And in a lot of cases, a simple carbon filter won't do the trick. So you'll need to do something more robust like reverse osmosis with a mixing valve to blend back in those important minerals we talked about earlier, which on the smaller side can be around $2,000 or more, as well as filter and membrane changes, which can be multiple hundreds of dollars at a six month or year intervals. It is the most sustainable solution, but it also is the most costly up front, and it'll likely cost you more to maintain the RO system than it would to maintain the Mini. So to break down my own personal cost of ownership for the Linea Mini, I brought my trusty notes. So we're starting with $500 in wear and tear items, that's gaskets, screens, baskets, and springs, $520 in water, I've used Crystal Geyser since day one, no other water has been through that machine, and also $380 in out of warranty repairs, service, and labor. So the grand total is $1,400. But of course, whenever you get something mechanical, you're always gonna be rolling the dice and getting a lemon or something that has problems out of the box. So that's just the nature of life. But generally, in my personal experience, I think the ownership costs of a Linea Mini is pretty reasonable. The next question comes from Tom on Instagram, and he asks, do you ever regret getting the Mini over the GS3? Now, Tom, that's a fairly common question. I've got that quite a bit. I think I talked about it last year, but I think it's worth touching base on that again for something that'll be clear just here in a few minutes. But the short answer is no, I don't regret getting the Mini over the GS3 or insert any other machine name there. But the long answer is it's complicated. Now, value for money is kind of a funny thing. The adage, one man's trash is another man's treasure comes to mind, basically meaning that value is in the eye of the beholder. And with me, the Mini's value is in its simplicity translating into reliability. So as far as regrets go, no, I have none. But has the Mini reached or is it about to reach the end of its reign on my bar? And the answer to that is yes. Moving away from the Mini in the near future has nothing to do with its ability to make great espresso. It does that and that's not really debatable. But for me, it's because I have a vested interest in being able to keep up with the current trends in espresso, as well as the need to want to pursue my own. Yet the Mini isn't leaving my possession, and I still think it's one of the best home espresso machines out there for the casual but committed espresso drinker, because it's simple, it's stylish, and it's reliable. This Mini will end up finding its way into my kitchen to become my new daily driver for personal consumption espresso, and whatever ends up landing on my bar next will purely be there for exploration and content creation. Anyway, this video is getting a little bit long and has a bit more of my face than even I would prefer, so I'm gonna start wrapping it up here. So if you have any questions about mini ownership or any recommendations for new machines, drop them in the comment section down below, and I'll see y'all next week.
And a big thank you to my January Patreon supporters, Stephen, Claire, Sam, Bound Coffee, Spookus, Noel, Cheryl, Tom, Sean, Horison, Rose, Squeegee, Christopher, Ads, Josh, Corey, Tim, Matt, Jason, Cameron, Robert, Underdunk, Jeffrey, and Jeff, Daniel P, Mike B, Brian M, Tyler M, and Jose M, BJK Cafe, JRC, Absolute, Stephen G, Home Barista Coach, and Keefe, Gumby, Alexis M, Barista Michael, Arthur L, Techcom Advisors, Ed T, Joseph M, Keith M, and Gary M, Devo H, Ben K, Rami C, Monster 04, Bruce P, James B, and Lilac Y, and of course, a big thank you to the barista and barback tiers. If you want any information on my Patreon, there's a link in the description and the upper right hand corner right now. And of course, thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that little bell button for notifications of new videos posted every Friday. Check out my Instagram at Spermetheus for content throughout the week, my blog at Spermetheus.com, my coffee at LittleGiant.coffee, and as always, stay caffeinated, pony boy.